Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Come through booming on this thing. <laughs> welcome to the last day of Poetry Month. Um, what can I say? Uh, these are my favorite sentient beings that are about to come to the microphone. Um, it's going to be a, a beautiful, beautiful treat. Um, first up, I don't know why I'm lifting this thing up, because I'm going to have to lower the microphone <laughs> for my brother, Landon Smith. <laughs> Seven nine. <clears throat> uh, there are two less feet in a tent this evening. And somewhere, a prison guard gives another closed fist speech about order. The air thins above a tent pole eviction notice while a new jumpsuit is handed to a tooth on a cement floor. Nikki Bass photo shoot next to gentrified housing while Noel Gallo votes to steal more Fruitvale money into patrol cars. Leech Van ready to pile up bodies just to bleed corners drive for development while Gary Yee red tags another black school for prison bed construction. At least there will be clean street corners, a dirty mouth in a suit will say. At least there will be law and order. Dirt is always better when swept under a rug or at least onto the next encampment, and three tents blown on the other side of 580 will lower property value just for more protest signs to pop up and be ignored next week. But did you know there is no such thing as an empty bomb threat thrown at a black house? Greenwood and Pine still can't move past the cement with marrow mixed in, so excuse me for taking white history seriously as I walk down these HBCU steps with a target on my back for what another white board member bans a book from speaking on. And another black mayor steps up to a podium to say, it is a shame, or in these troubling times, or we are better than this, despite all the evidence otherwise. And matter of fact, who is we? Who be this we in backroom meetings? Who be the we turning the wheel on the ship? Who be this we saying we are part of the problem, saying we do it to ourselves, saying we can't get respect until we respect ourselves? Who? Who does we coming sideways out your mouth talking about mo pay for leeches to put up see something, say something signs, then turn around and pocket dial bomb threats to black campuses talking about we better watch our back, we better hurry up and die, we better go back now that the labor costs more than the ground meat on my back. Who? Who does we we supposed to be a part of? Who does we we supposed to be better than? Sitting on the left side of an abandoned building because I took white history for what it is and spoke to the remains of the last threat, shoveled onto a whitewashed MLK quote, shoveled onto the left hand of a Philadelphia cut short, shoveled onto a Tulsa, I mean, a Rosewood, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm on pace to be called a nigger 212 times by summer. It is January. There are only 10 days left in this month, and I refuse to be a corpse by the third, but catch me fist closed on the fourth, and I might be gone by the fifth if this white woman in power has her way, which is the same as that white man in that seat, which is the same as that last missed check, which is the same as that eviction notice. My mother says the cloth of my ancestors makes me bulletproof. So I put on a new head wrap every time passive aggressive headshots fire off of cradled tongues down into the gutters of unswept streets where I'm told that I belong. And I walk around with cash just in case I pass another cardboard sign, giving a fortune to crates just to see more hungry mouths the next month. It's almost like I cannot fix these encampments on my own, like starvation is intentional, like billions in surplus don't exist. Maybe by the end of this poem, you can tell me what the cause is. While I kick three more election pamphlets off my doorstep since I don't do drugs on Tuesdays ever since my neighbor overdosed on Kamala Harris bumper stickers. Meanwhile, city of San Francisco made 90 million in parking tickets. Just to not have affordable housing just to hire more pigs to put tickets on windshields, to pay for pigs putting tickets on windshields. And my last $60 goes to the cardboard sign again. You know, a fist fight is always fair to the waistband with a gun tucked inside. And you know, an eviction is always fair to the feet standing on a bankroll. But my cousin told me that not all skin folk are kin folk, so I keep two feet in my back pocket so I land on my feet when I'm sucker punched between line breaks and a neoliberal slides a judge lump sums to slide me into solitary silence so that a white tenure professor can tell you that these are not poems that these are lyrics, that these are a soapbox, and that they are too unhoused and must cut their hair before they deserve a home. 
Did you know there are children in prisons? That was not a punchline. Sometimes I just like to interrupt poems with facts, like capitalism is a plague, or there is no such thing as a white South African, or there are too many white people walking dogs in my neighborhood. One head on a yay area shirt, called the pigs on me, said my hair is disturbing the peace. You know the first, first rule of Fight Club? It's don't listen to white men. And what good is a fight club that ain't never fought for the splinters in my back? Took me three summers to find my voice. Had to use violence to do it. Preach violence for violence sake, then break the jaw of the softness nobody would listen to. And then, y'all consider burying me with my poems. When I started to speak from a Lorraine Motel balcony about the gun tucked under my tongue that I stashed behind the curtain, waiting on the next bomb, the next bomb. The next time a bomb shows itself at my doorstep, I will arm myself with thoughts and prayers and the hot takes of white people, because ain't shit more violent. You know, imperialism been walking with a hole in its leg the last three summers. Threw up flares about Cuba and China again. You know this empire shit ain't gonna last anyway. And I got all gold teeth, so my poems would appreciate over time. So you would take my words more seriously. So you would Africom nightmare yourself to sleep on a rocking chair made from my great grandmother's whittle bones. You know I talk to my childhood home on Sunday nights? Hoping I find a time where failure doesn't mean I'm two puddles under a tax paid tire while my child learns to fail while being fatherless for the first time. I hope I left enough time in their palm to be a reason they keep trying. Warden Cole pressed every fallen brick of my grandmother's home into my ashes before I left. And maybe I'll learn that violence only fails when violence fails. And I was never successful after all. And I only have enough love in my heart to fail this one, this one last time. So to make it count, I leave you this poem in my will. A message that you have to be quicker when they come for you. I am ready to know home wherever that may be, spinning Tracy Chapman records under my still body while clutching Walter Rodney in my rigor mortis fingerprint on my way to find peace somewhere, Florida back roads talking to the skin on my upper back, saying it got some leather for me if I don't keep moving, and on the wrong side of a train track you might find my solitary body. Sundown Sheriff caught a whiff of it, started unclipping holster, not knowing that in my left palm I packed the soles of the field, but in my right I shoot back at cops. Ain't no sunset long enough for the last breaths in my left palm, so I sing blue spirituals. Before you ask me why I choose violence, I can't know peace yet. Not with this grass slice and ankle bones, unk. Not with these worn down tires still begging for freedom, unk. On behalf of the hands gripping my left palm, I have no choice but to back alley to backwoods, bury disposition between Polk County plantation fences, and I might dance tonight too. Cut a rug one time for the ones who cut bondage from their left leg to kick the bucket with their right. I stare this plantation pig in the face, knowing that to be invincible is to carry the souls of the field with me and to tell that judge that I am not sorry because talking to hope is dangerous. Especially when hope puts weapon to palm, dim the lights and can't see itself anymore. Decides freedom means finally returning fire. Pulling shells from the left hip and turning couth into a three-course meal. Flicking scraps out of molars with a new appetite for finding freedom in one less uniform in a rear view. One less speech about the law. One less press conference about this land, this land. This land that breathes genocide every morning from the breath of its latte while hope gets pulled from its home by the toenail asking itself why not shoot back. Before the lights cut out and peace gets pulled from Hope's bicep, and the only body that Hope has left is the one picking bullets out of teeth, because if you don't carve out a healing space, a legislator might use your flesh for sacrifice. Fascism fed farm to table. Grassroots campaign can't rent, rid the stench of shit in the soil. National Guard on bureaucrat speed dial. Hey, tell them niggers not to loot, or air fresheners gonna spill blood on the ready-made caskets. Democracy just a fable we rode past, crossing into the cemetery we wake up in on a loop for the shards of black protest to get beaten into another voter campaign, for Obama to stand next to a black woman waving clinking chains of Asada, grinding bones in the soil backed by Biden budgets, virtue signaling progress just to express shit billy clubs, and kill the English dictionary in you, and you might be a revolutionary by nightfall. Offer your last breath to the asphalt, and it'll ask if you at least fought back. Chain holder made a quilt out of your ancestors. Sewed it loosely and told you let it keep you warm. Never had a dream within this colonial opiate. Capitalists uttered a railroad worker, then Silk Road traded them for dirt. Threw pig at a labor strike and watched the bodies fall. Greasy palms oil prison pipelines while a moderate still preaches reform. Property tax still funding school budgets and they got the nerve telling me to grab a picket sign while a rock laying right here. Smoke and mirror breeding in, in fighting over blood money. All money is blood money. Thought we made it out the cotton fields just to be grandfathered in. Heard a whip crack in a handcuff class, in a sentencing hearing, in a salary negotiation behind bulletproof plantation windows. But I drag infected minds through the broken tires of my unread poems. McCarthyism smashed into my dinner plate, hoping to crack the communists from my swollen red knuckles. John Ehrlichman shoulder shrugs my car upside down to the part of foothill buried in flashing patrol lights, while Reaganism hovers above my neighborhood like smog in my kids' new lungs. Biden era pinstrokes flood Lake Merritt with pay stations hoping to drown out sideshows. There is blood on your overcoat, Libby. 
What good is a progressive leech, Libby, if I will still be three courts low after the confirmation hearing confirms me to be a necessary sacrifice? On the white Jesus altar, a justice harmonizing about the beauty in my execution. South Carolina fire, firing squad triggering my last rites before I become a useful bullet in the throat of my comrades. An empire sells bombs in the name of my great grandmother's dirt scraped knees. But I drag my lineage through dirt roads, sandstorms, scraping knees on cement cinder blocks stacked in the way. My wrist cut deeply on the journey. Salt water stinging bones showing before someone else tells me I'm healed, tells me to move on. Because I drag lineage by their wrists, wiping off a race of dust mixed with diamond flakes they sold back to us, saying that's all our hands were good for. Losing limbs between borders some European gave name to that I should be proud of, that Singbay P.A. revolted to come back to. Maybe my wrist bleed on the chains he broke just to be Spielberg in the white saviorhood. When I feel my lineage weighted down belief beneath Volongo wharf remains, paved over just to be paved over, just to be built atop under silk cover smelling like liberation strangleholds. While I drag lineage to a native language, not a native language, in hopes of speaking with lineage between borders and sandstorms, I was told I didn't need to know. Enough Mende for struggle. I drag my lineage with dislocated wrists. Separated at the broken tree branch, telling stories in contradiction to a tall tale pillar by monument and sand in my shoes. You know, a real poet told me once that not every story has to appeal to the heart. It can appeal to the spine. Severed vertebrae out and hear me out from straight jacket buckles and scratches on cement walls that made my spine property of the state. That made me two-thirds of a past the future left bloodstained baton swing. Slush from bomb exploding outside what used to be my bedroom wall just long enough for the taste of robot to be family heirloom. Nobody even asked where I wanted my body to be buried. I am talking to this soil like everything is a weapon formed against me. Melatonin making mega ever's my docent on this impending bullet train. Woke up ten times lost. Coroner can tell you jokes three minutes past America if you wait long enough, but might di diagnose you as a rebel if you speak too loudly about the cause of death. Every 20 minutes, another puppet dies by teleprompter. Tells a revolutionary to just vote if they want change. Tucks in sheets on deathbed for preparation. Hell, how you gonna make it out alive anyway? We used to breathe air, now all we do is drink water and pray for the fire next time. Burning flag flapping around a body somebody deemed illegal somewhere. Drew a border and said, I dare you to cross. Let's see if your lungs can take in more air than this bullet can take from you. First step is to dare you to dream. Second step gets you to fall in love with the sound of a growling stomach. Third step puts you on a postcard sacrifice to a tree branch. What good is the poet with no neck, the coroner will joke. Only half of half of the half he spoke to listened anyway. And my burial plot plays center stage for encore viewing. You know, floating on a Sierra Leone river, I am less weight than tree. Tree telling my neck it meant to shield me before I became a dash somewhere within this project where I can't even float. You know, a white poet told me once that not every poem needs to be a revolution. Like my pen not attached to a fist with scab knuckles from punching through oak memories trying to talk to my uncle in Haiti I never met who's trying to talk to my aunt's headstone in Brazil these crop dusted palms never got to touch. I must be a carpenter. From all these splinters stinging white prayer circles gathered around staple corners I was born a poet and I have hitchhiked my way to a last meal beneath this tree. So let me pause for a second and see just how much Sierra Leone is left beneath my fingernails. Thank you. Give some more love to Landon Smith, please. <laughs> Next up for your listening pleasure, Melani Clay. trip. South. Maryland has more trees than one might think. Long limbs covered in ghosts like weeping cherry blossoms. 
His mother trails you deep into Maryland, waving goodbye every few miles, crying as you accompany her son on his chase for a freedom he never finds. Midwest. Much of this country's highways are little more than asphalt Benadryl. He resented doing most of the driving. You resented pissing on the side of the road when rest stops were deemed inconvenient. Your mother taught you to bathe your pubescent body by stopping you in the hallway before your shower, pantomiming where to wash, a stern reminder your cursory rinse would no longer suffice for godliness. You imagine that same 12-year-old you grasping hold of your vocal cords, begging for a proper shower after two and a half days of fast food bathroom wash-ups. But he drove like you were fugitives, like you were on the run. He drove like Channel Orange was not synth and bass, but the hollow plink of a silent movie's piano soundtrack. On screen, he appears as the hero, his cape a do-rag flapping in July breezes, face masked by aviator sunglass riding hard to the rescue. You as the damsel, outfitted in yoga pants and poetry slam t-shirt, hand to forehead in exaggerated distress as you await his arrival, uncertainty barreling down the tracks to crush you both. He fashioned himself your savior and you let him. Let him convince you if he only deposited your life just three-fourths of a mile from where you first drew breath, your lungs might cease to remind your heart of how he once left them wrapped in grief's ever-tightening grip before you took him back, before you spent humid mid-Atlantic nights cursing his name and weeping into empty shot glasses. Mountains. Montana startles with the deep emerald of firmly rooted grass. Utah soars into the sky, limestone and rust. Some parts of this country are beautiful enough to make you forget you've been stuck with the narcissist for three days, still mourning the crate of books he shamed you into leaving behind, not yet knowing you'll soon be shoving him into walls, threatening to leave if he won't stop treating your love for him like the grandest curse. West. On the last day, you rose to shockingly crisp air at a rest stop just over the California border. Hovered above a trucker's toilet, opened tiny blue cups until the gas station's reheated coffee felt more elixir. For a moment, your belly knotted with fatigue and plastic burgers you thought about leaving, calling your mother to come rescue you the way she promised to junior year when your blood was late and it was all your fault instead. After the tank is filled, you're in the driver's seat. He spent the morning feeling proud of himself for furnishing your apartment from Craigslist. After three and a half days on the road, you'll spend six more hours traversing the East Bay to gather it all without much more than a high five from the love of your life. East. Two years later at your rehearsal dinner, held in his hometown to accommodate the fact he didn't want to marry you in the first place, friends will laugh about this road trip as the defining point in your relationship. Since no one wants to recall the way you berate him when you're wasted, call him names you don't remember and he won't repeat. In the borrowed community room of a lush apartment complex, blocks from the nation's monuments to its own sordid history, he raises a toast. Seated to his right, a smile plays at your lips, but your eyes hold memory of his profile, once silhouetted against the setting sun and a flat expanse of highway, the last time you looked at the side of his face, believed he turned to you and smile. A bullet is a bouquet until it is aimed at a black body. Same way a machete can be a butter knife, a rifle, a balloon animal, squeaky clean, depravity, a mental illness. Same way a bullet entering a chamber can be a prayer with a white man behind it. Every question from a black mouth becomes an assault, refusal to comply with their death sentence, forever being sentenced to death, forever caught between capital and finality. A wallet is a gun, a stereo is a gun, slick tongue gun, psychosis gun, turn back gun, loud voice gun, sweat gun. Everything is a gun except a gun when it is in a white man's hands. Then it is taser, it is shield, it is a punity, it is stiff breeze blown across the fragile sands of a human life rendering it an echo among the grains. All my attackers must be R. Kelly's and Bill Cosby's, pedophiles or perverts, for me to have half a chance of being taken seriously. 
but the friend who trails his hand too far down my back, the lover who chooses to bury my no beneath all the yes that came before it, the boy I called myself falling for who played bass in church. None of them are monsters, yet memories of them still hide beneath my bed, breath hot with denial, whispering doubt into my dreams without being pinned down, without being drugged, without being underage, without dark alleys and strangers with weapons, and even with any of these, my story has no teeth, nothing with which to attach itself to righteous outrage. We are never victims, even when there is a fight and DNA under fingernails, even when there's video and scars, even when the world becomes the dumpster behind which you leave our bodies contorted and trembling, our stories are still little more than think peace fertilizer, growing clicks and traffic, but changing nothing about how we feel forced to sleep fully clothed with lights on, feel forced to never be alone, even when solitude would nourish us, feel forced to keep our stories stories buried out of the blazing rays of unrighteous indignation. For multitudes, there is a place between monster and human where too many travel, a Bermuda Triangle where accountability and remorse vanish in the swirling, turbulent waters of patriarchal violence instead of telling the truth, instead of shouting our stories into the storm to be swallowed in self-righteous solidarity, we watch as monuments and murals, accolades and opportunities are heaped upon these beings. Instead of grieve, we survive. This last one. I tired of writing poems for white people, so I gave birth to one they can't read. A copper skin poem revised for 37 weeks and five days. A poem with my exuberance wound helix around each curl laughing loud toward the sky. A poem with my resistance etched into a tiny furrowed brow. I gave birth to a poem with my rage alchemized into a gilded voice, never backing down, never silent on command. A poem with my hope sewn carefully to its sternum, a little patchwork, yet certain all the same. I gave birth to a poem that doesn't know any words but synonyms for love and freedom, a poem that careens down sidewalks, ecstatic shrieks, prayers laid at the highest altar. This poem's eyelids are lined with the silk of my faith. This poem is invincible. Still, one day, though I gave birth to this poem, this people's poem, I know someone will try to read her anyway. Failing, they will demand I translate, but the poem I birthed was never meant for their understanding. For between the lines of this poem's lashes, I placed a single dream, a future that is this poem's and this poem's alone to write. Thank you. Please, way more for Melani Clay. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm up here playing things goofy, you know, but uh, these these poets, well, you know, Landon, he's more than just vertically challenged. He's also, <laughs> he's also the most amazingly principled a uh, human being I know, uh, brilliant on the page, brilliant in the classroom, um, just really stepped out of a holy land into our lives. And Melani Clay, as you witnessed, is a hurricane and also a brilliant educator. Uh, I think it's actually not a coincidence with all of these poets coming up. So. Um, we call this little shindig the West Revisits Harlem because, you know, we are a couple blocks away of what used to be called <laughs> the Harlem of the West, you know. Now it's... <laughs> it is the, the Sausalito of San Francisco. <laughs> what do we call it now? <laughs> uh, I digress. Uh, up next um, is uh, 
somebody we're, we're super honored to have in the uh, city and county of San Francisco right now, man, uh, the outer worldly Dante Clark. Lions and lambs gather around the porch light near the praying man to hear his banana clip theory in hopes to keep the devil off before being buried in gold and joining the Vanilla Sky Club. He said, we hasted through the fires of South Sin after our feet, I unintentionally carried the flames of Mississippi burnings with us on our exodus trail of tears up north and westbound, covered by the ash of Jim Crow with the smudge of smoke seeping deep into our lungs crawling through our veins and hardening its thick coat onto our blood, leaving our children to be birthed with a mark that's profitable when persecuted. He said, we be the prophecy that the Bible speaks of, how in the silence of the lambs, there is a ghost that walks through the tall grass during the keeping hours. And every time I die beneath the leaves, the legacy of the bones rebirth between worlds. So I imagine if pain was a person It'll be from the projects in my birthplace, where fed babies walk headstrong with secret scars under black feet and their demons with cold shoulders and no chill. Holding on to switches and drakes on a purge for days and nights with no prayers, no features, no dealings with real love over thoughts for hurting more than yesterday, whose image is nonchalant, with a pistol by the bed under the influence of 28 bars, knowing word for word of a 7-Eleven in a brain-dead jungle, and when truth be told, and federal pressure clears this air, this reckless mind frame will be blind and relentless again and again and again. Sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tides roll away. Sitting on the dock of the bay, it's wasting time. Or sitting on the block in the bay, watching my kind fade away. Mm -mm. Posted on the block in the bay, this rage of mine. Uh, I'm high sitting, early sunrise, Richmond, with some of my kindred sipping, reminiscing about when we were children, outside empty buildings, feeling all of the feelings of living under no ceilings, yeah, yeah. Wish to prevail, no work under fingernails. So we inhale to escape while we inhale with stale, dry well, impaled by corner sales. I'm replaying my L's. I wear my public fails with yells and random screaming. Dealing with inner demons keep leaving out of my body. I probably won't need a reason to. I probably won't see a reason for breathing on any longer. Faded, almost a goner. I want to go to them heavenly gates. If not the case, I just... Sit on the block in the bay. Wait, because I imagine brass men with brass skin lagged on a drag with the evil. Sidewalk huddled with their peoples, feeble in spirit, gazing stock on Broadway. You know the sights. Doing what niggas do all day, ash chasing and fast pacing. We hand to mouth, forever standing out, a spiritual drought. Left the heavenly house to go sleep on the devil's couch. Street life, we call it. Paving way for new day. Murderous thieves and alcoholics. Uh, holics. 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 Posted on the block in the bay. Knowing my time I could fade today. Mm -mm. Posted on the block in the bay. It's wasting time. Man, it's quite usual. See it like nothing's new to you. Limited to these cubicle circle corners like hula hoops, hard knock was a school of you. Thugging from wound to funeral. Gang case on my cuticles, making poverty beautiful, yeah. Overgrinding, knowing that time is winding backwards on our shining. So we invest in diamonds. I'm trying, but I be lying. Pretending that all is dying. Don't have me clutching that iron to keep my mind from crying while I am my suit. Staining my new coat, 
Buying me new suits with flowers over my view. My cuz now feel blue. Tripping, nothing to do but tie up them war boots. Go shoot, high pursuit. Just another body dropped in the bay. We losing our mind. I ain't living this way. Mm -mm. Posted on the block with a K. This rage of mine. Young prophets and visionaries cover obituaries, thick as dictionaries, and it's scary. Be wary of the soothsayers and fairies and the spiritual seeds they carry. Now tell me this, if you knew the streets was the devil's bride, would you still get married to the game? Think about that. Sitting here drying my bones, and these evils just won't leave me alone. Waiting for the day I'm called home, this rage of mine. Because where I'm from, the town is a graveyard. So to see no evil wouldn't be a West Side story. And to hug the block is church for thugs who sees remedy and rocking the Jesus piece more than running into heaven's arms. With peer pressure and project hallways, be having shook ones live an eye for an eye from cradle to grave as blood sport. Stuck in a trife life with nighttime vultures get dealt with, left in a place where they can't drink their pain away, so they smoke it. But I say let this be my apostles warning with some flavor for non-believers. My attempt to spread love and drop a gem on you before the party is over and I dump this backstage past the mayhem for the adrenaline rush of day dreaming about pearly gates while waiting to exhale. Like find me on a jet life to foreign summer sipping Jamaican rum under elevator music. Where I don't have to breathe drugs to be kicking clouds in black heaven having a standoff with memory lane cause my eyes hurt when I miss who he was during cartoons and Crayola before my avenue was pain. And I believe that black babies didn't mourn when accidents happened on the loner's boulevard and suing after another one of those benevolent shooters aim pieces through the air to leave a queen and slim broke in a minute haunted by a voice flaring i told you i told you about chasing them enchanted waterfalls which will only bring you us pain even when the joke's on you us too so peace in my heart is wrapped in egyptian cloth Buried beneath the pavement of cocaine paid corners where a thousand corpses lie like dead flowers and family secrets at a fish fry. Sitting parallel parked at front lines of bricks and murals and fifty seats. Counting 30 shell cases and black spoons compiled after Reaganomics then left scattered brains on the bosky yacht. Reaping an aftermath of a juvenile hellhole when our beloved saw left a slap box with bullet holes in their throats. When red beams are highly praised like we ain't the sons of kings. huh? Like we ain't sons. Like we ain't kings. Like, we ain't the son to kings. So mama told me always keep a machete. Cause there ain't no take backs from the grave when the fire be kicking tree limbs at the liquor store. No, gotta be a blue moon on a swivel. Or in these fields, you'll become the new Negro spiritual. And life mm, sings me sweet songs. I would love to dance, but I'm afraid of my feet. You know, peace in me is trying to piece together a peace of mind. Like, whatever peace of mind I find is fine, you know, unless by design what I find don't provide me a peace of mind. You see, peace of mind is peace of mind. My mind won't peace of mind to come back, way back, back before this trap black. This peace of my mind been outlined in black, the black black, the darkest hue with a pack black, that dirt kneeled in the thirst field. Work first, but forced to feed off your scraps like life, mm, sing me sweet songs. I would love to dance, but I'm afraid of my feet. I'm a walking prayer, Negro spiritual. Cry from a broken heart that bleeds obsidian. Try not to be a cup of bitter sip on bed table, absent of soul food. In the kitchen, out of reach from grandma's hands in some trap house, section eight miles away from life that's living. No, I want to empty out, be baptized in honey, and drip for eternity. For eternity, for four eternities, like life, mm, sing me sweet songs. Because I would love to dance, but... I was born pissed without a pot to piss in. Raised down the poverty street over, which makes us opposition. Losing common sense to bottomless pockets. Picket and picket fences probably won't profit us poor people willing. Oh shit, not in America. We chocolate children smiling cavities. Duck, duck, goose chasing underground railroads to safe havens of heaven. Where white man's dreams fall from a 4th of July sky. All while we still catching hell. Hell. That's just a freeway exit away. Flow straight, blow through the light, break two lefts and to the right, you'll be there, hell. You'll see hella people, hella high, hoping like hell to spread wings above telephone wires and shoestrings. Past shoeless Jimmy them, puffy eye leaning back to a time worth dream about. A hell of a winner these past 60 years, been. Still ain't figured if where I'm at is hella hot or cold as hell. Hell, all I know is these bullets burn. And it's some cold young brother shooting them when life, mm, sing me sweet songs.
And I would love to dance, but thinking the thoughts that trauma teaches to thinking. See, they're trying to train those of us as thoroughbred to talk tersely and timid, you know, to teeter. Teeter till teetering teaches us to trace to the third trace of toddler. To be tripping, tumbling 10,000 times till we're tossed over to the tango of taunting tales that's told to us about their tenacious taboos. The tragic traffic, that track list, the torture that's tattooed in the thrusting trials, trekking with tribulations, always there to twist and touch the torsos of the talented ten, the targeted. The ten toes of the toughest teenagers traumatized by the tactics that the tyrannical task force used to tame us by torch, huh? They're trying to tear through our time, huh? While there be too many teachers, thieving the temples, taking to the temples be Tilted, tied, a tie, then this piece be tipped to them. The tongue tied, tied ticks that's tricking the people. The trap triple out their treasures, trash to the totality of the treacherous terror domes, the tasteless territories that the thugs tend to, where there be telephones that televise a tirade of toxic tears. Mm. That's truism, the thinking and thoughts that trauma teaches the thinking, how we go through total turmoil just to tell our tribal testimonies through telephone, hmm, telephones, hmm, telephones, hmm. Ring, ring, the boogie, man. Tell him I got a song that a string that ghetto bird his grave will sing along. And while that's happening. I'll be on the run from the soulless barking by the body count. Cause those are offerings made for the devil's team. And by the time I get to Arizona, they would have you believe that we are prophets of rage and mind terrorists because I don't want to be called yo nigga. Because I wrote a letter to the New York Post and made a boast that we have shut them down. Bet they say we too much posse. We too much rebel without a pause like black steel in the hour of chaos, but don't believe the hype. We only bring the noise that's louder than the bomb that'll raise the roof to the security of the first world because we all want power to the people. But the CIA snuck and set a time bomb for a mega blast to turn our revolutionary generation into the night of the living baseheads. Not because my Uzi weighs a ton, but simply because they fear a black planet. And if y'all knew about the family ties of the Freemason pirates in a presidential White House who were hustling, moving base, and got rich off cocaine, turning our Silk Road into a 9-11 free enterprise of black opium where, where, prayer and, where prayer over pots and pans could turn into gunplay, hella smoke and brimstone, just for the face to be riding through my ghetto in the valley of death, speeding in the Ashton Martin, music super high, chucking a peace sign, sucking down, pice, pi sucking down diced pineapples, drying their tears of joy, as others sleep talking Russian roulette with free guns on private property, then you'll know how to stay dangerous, speak the truth, and beat the odds. Mm. Ring, ring the boogie man. Tell him I got a song that a string that ghetto bird. His grave. Mm. Thank you. We know what to do. Give some more to Dante Clark. Uh, you, you know why, why else we, we call it uh, the, the West Revisits Harlem because, you know, especially concerning the realities of oppressed people, uh, we don't have the same relationship to chronology, you know. Uh, for us, you know, these ancestors is right next door or sitting all around this room. The struggle is the same mandate, right? Um, so for your listening pleasure, another mind that you can drop off anywhere <laughs> in the space-time continuum, the Poet Laureate of San Jose. Shaka Campbell.
Had it right. How y'all doing? No, that sounded like bullshit. Uh, how y'all doing? Good. Okay. I am honored to be here, honored to be invited and share the stage with uh, so many amazing souls. So I'm just going to do a couple poems for y'all. And landed, dude, that memory, I used to have that. And then I had a daughter and all that shit just, anyway. This was not a choice made, thumbs twindling, rocking a chair somewhere. I was born to this. There is nothing to be removed or altered. This is how I, I stand. This is how my calf roots me, how my fingers hold. This is what the air tastes like when I breathe this stride is of centuries of journeys sunken into the ball of feet and the anchor of hips. No, this was not a choice. It was purpose. Take me to the river. I want to know. This could be a poem about pain, but it's not. This could be about justice, but it's not. It's not about a festival of raised arms, inciting smiling bullets. No, it's just about bullets. Just bullets, period. Bullet lonely. Bullet needs warm flesh. That's what bullets told to do, trained to do. Holster to unupholstered escape, to a burning caress, to push through skin like moving tunnels, to excavate like first hello. Bullet likes foaming mouths. Likes the thick ripples made when it hits blood bubbles. Bullet likes how muscle fibers massage its back on entry, but muscle tissue too boring. Bullet likes bone, likes bone better, likes the fine bone, likes how the ricochet is more fun and more lethal. Bullet likes how random pain can be easily inflicted, but bullet rarely seen. Bullet runs too fast to be coveted. Bullet always covered, always covered in human, in smoke, in blood, always covered, never seen, only bullets footsteps examined. Its pathways reenacted, its fingerprints analyzed, so bullet gets jealous. Bullet jealous, bullet jealous of how blood cells clamor in unison like families. How they hold each other close. How after bullet's graping handshake leaks onto the concrete, they all join hands and sing hymns. Bullet wants family too, bullet wants family, bullet wants to be plural, so bullet threatens T, kills R and kidnaps S. Bullet now bullets. Bullets now swarm like bees. Like locusts, like religion, like control, but still, Bullet wants more than control. Bullet wants more than religion. Bullet wants to worship, to be worshipped. Bullet needs more than just family. See, family just regurgitated pain, gunpowder in a cold embrace. Bullet wants more than just warm flesh, more than just puncture. Bullet wants open wounds. Bullet wants to be remembered. Bullet wants to aim, wants to aim high, but Bullet can't aim by itself, so it aspires to be infamous like, like the American dream. Bullet wants the American dream like, like memories of bedtime stories with Malcolm. Martin, Oscar, Amadou, bullet jealous again. See, those bullets went Hollywood. Bullet wants to be a screenplay adapted for ghetto boys. Other bullets gone indie, wants to be a cult. Bullet wants success, wants to be admired, wants Netflix original series. Bullet wants red carpet, wants VIP, wants news stories, primetime coverage, wants to be interviewed by Oprah. Bullet wants a, a Facebook page, better yet Twitter, hashtag yes. Bullet wants his own hashtag, hashtag best bullet ever. Hashtag dopest bullet since Christmas addicts. Hashtag dopest bullet since Lincoln, since Trayvon, since Eleanor Bumpers, but Bullet needs PR, so Bullet hires an agent. Bullet learns Spanish and practices street slang, ebonics, bullet studies, Swahili and penal codes. Bullet gets to read for the role. Bullet gets killed for the audition and flo flown to Missouri the first day of shooting. Bullet scarred. Bullet scarred and scared of the lights, of the action, of the body cameras. But bullet steady. Bullet focus. Bullet believes bullet can do anything it wants to do with the right motivation, so bullet wins. Bullet gets casted for the next Genesis six sequels. Bullet gets used to the glitz. Bullet wins. Bullet gets nominated for an Oscar, Bullet wins. Bullet gets a home in the hills, Bullet gets famous, Bullet has fans, Bullet wins. And when asked how Bullet made it so big, Bullet responds, I was just pointed in the right direction. Bullets always win. Thank you. I'm going to try and remember this one. What if we're just ordinary men, retracing the paths of our forefathers? Better yet, what if we're the combined memories of aborted pharaohs, 
confusion in blackface. Puppets passing time by granting others the rights to our identity and stride, y'all. What if I told you that last night I decided to swallow mirrors and I fell asleep looking for a new view of myself? I woke up to an odd image, an image of the president hustling the Pope for the underground blueprints of the ghetto. Mona Lisa blowing in his hands for good luck. Condoleezza up his sleeve, I heard him whisper, red top raises makes blacks fold by the thousands. He said, I raise you society. Poured into a petri dish, filtered through microscopes, we've held them between church and state, but now that we control their money, we need to constitute their faith. See, y'all, the view of us to date has been seen on the atomic level since the days of sand rain. Ah, shit. On the atomic level, since the days of sand rain. I told you about that daughter, right? Oh, you're right. Hold on, hold on, hold on right there. Because I want to do this, but usually I'll just move on to something else. I want to do this. So it's going to happen. Aha. Control their money. We need to constitute their faith. Their view of us today has been seen on the atomic level since the days of sand rain. Between Tuskegee experiments, dictators dictating creation from standstill dreams, they stretched me. Recreated chromosomes, published connect the dot field slave manuals for easy replication. They advertised free, free National Geographic headshots and vibe and double XL, but now I have double X that I appear to you as clone black man. Kalimba capillaries fed by CNN. Drum beats in my heart. Hallowed echoes reverberating slog McKay. Claude McKay, Stokely, County, Cullen, Mohammed, Mustafa, Ali, GK, O.C., Okri, Yusuf, Tubman, C.L.R., James, Baldwin, Nathaniel, Hannibal, Giovanni, Osiris, Isis, Shaka, Manelik, Imhotep today, you tomorrow, yesterday we were Philistine. I am revolution brushed with Dogon, Sirius B vision. Serious about walking down a famished Broadway block using Da Vinci codes to hack into Disneyland because y'all, they've been slipping us Mickeys. Tight rope around my neck, tomorrow in a sling. Sorting through sugarcane sweat record labels to define my ingredients, y'all. I played BET. I played BET on Nintendo Game Boys worldwide. They've gamed black boys in the world while MTV tutors held handcuffed kindergarten classes in their mouths. I found the word Pepsi in MS Word spell check. Pepsi ain't even a fucking word. Y'all best believe niggas and spicks will be in version 10.0. I am clone Negro. Africa in my veins. Carrying my nigga named American Express Black Card member since 1804, they forced me to leave home without it. I'm the usual suspect with a permanent limp from crip walking with shackles. A starving vegetarian in a herd of buffalo. I can only be as I am told, even when I'm told I'm not. Wrestling with demons that resemble progress, I am a Brooklyn slave inside of a crack pipe in the middle of Afghanistan, picking cotton with Black Panthers at my heels. Black Jacobins on my birth certificate, using Malcolm X postage stamps to shop at Target, bullseye tattooed to black boy mosquitoes. These bloodsuckers think I can't feel them bite. I'm America's handprint on Hutu machetes, wearing mudcloth blindfolds and cotton fields stuffed into my ears to muffle the sound of seven generations, y'all. I can only see the moon's orbit in metaphors. Ready for the world armed with cliff note heritage. A Jamaican terrorist plot to recapture reggae music, rewind selector, Babylon soon come. I am new brand Negro, brand new Negro. Franchise Negro with Nike chakras included, preloaded ice grills sold separately. At conflict with conflict diamonds, creating conflict around heroes being made out of pimps and convicts, y'all. I'm the stakes from the Pope and the president till we realize what's really at stake for the Pope and the President. I'm a black man at the age of confusion, and I'm just looking, I'm just looking, I'm looking for a new view of myself. Thank you. Got through it. Y'all still all right? Y'all still good? Okay. All right, I'm a, um, I'm gonna end with this one. Uh, it's funny that we talk about bringing West to, to Harlem because I, I grew up in New York, so the Harlem makes sense. I'm on the West Coast, so the West Coast makes sense. And I, I got a poem called Black on the Pacific. So that makes sense. The act of yawning is revolutionary. It's the ancestors riding a breath to escape but I'll need you to change yourself. This breathing is normal as relooping vinyl to scratch out a party from a buried eulogy. It's in the song, right? 
It's in the movement. Like the second great migration that brought us west in the first place, we hear corralled in the bends of California like, like when the sleep of words hang in the corner of your eyes, they may look as if they see more of you than the mirror that you're currently grooming your grandma's life's recipes from out your natural hair, picked from your own like cotton looks a familiar nappy from hair. But here's where the sun sets darker than blue. And the cut of salt from the Pacific ash our brown and black skin to a fleeting white, but we still boy though. We still underneath a noble savage, but still boy. And told multiple times that boy is only trunk, muzzled, track boy. Boy's paraffin skin will ignite in the West Coast sun, so boy's bones buried alive, cause body too violent. See how it slices when it moves? Boy too damaged to move by himself. Boy body not his own to control. Boy frame must be frame, must be housed, segregated, prop 14. See, look what happens when you're let free. But I don't need y'all to change yourself. This is normal as screaming awake in silence, cause our souls speak in whispers as to not wake the dead, shh. I fell asleep last night, thinking of why funerals hunt for graves in the same places over and over. And I woke up with a mouth full of exhaled whispers aching to ascend. I said, ain't no shame in the not knowing who you are. I don't need you to change yourself. This be, this be a play, right? Writing us out of the series finales, but the network keeps slipping us under the sight lines. And we watch from a distance from, from Project Fair's fire escapes as downtown buildings cast a mural of shadows moving to a dark dance to a zombie apocalypse. See, see, 2520 don't know it's really just a family reunion in Code Switch. Deep fried turkey in college and asking each other which burial site you hailing from. Ain't no shame in the not knowing each other, though. He say, he say my side out of Manhattan under what they now call Wall Street. Then he say, well, my peoples, my peoples out of Oscarville way. We always laid on accounts our bodies hold too much water, so you may not recognize the resemblance, but I think we can from my mother's side. See, this is normal as redlining churches and liquor stores. Time we swallow and eat from our own plate is full. It's full, recipes seasoned like how Sundays are already built into the journey since grandmama gave you birth and told you, leave home and prosper, honey. Ain't nothing but pain in history here, so go west, my dear. We so full of food and the past and tastes like the whole earth. Like the whole earth been, been needing our children in dough and still we rise each morning to checking for any rebellion stuck in our throats. Don't cover your mouth, it's going to stop changing us. I said, don't cover your mouth, ain't no shame in the not knowing. If you yawn and you already woke and can't nobody tell us how to be awake. We know how to, we how to do wake, y'all. We perfected how to mourn. Who can say how to hold on in flight this, this serum, sweet like jeopardy and chocolate kisses pulled out from the black of our own dungeons. It's like, it's like we time machine downtown San Jose, Fifth Street and San Fernando, and we pushed Nigeria back into the mouth of Lord Lagarde and coughed ourselves from whence we were born into ourselves. When we owned ourselves, pigmented till our skin cracks open and its soil seeps into kingdoms. We are beautiful. We are beautiful. We are so, so beautiful. This original flesh, so, so mine, so ours, so, so torn from people. Pieces that caught wind like prayer breath, like, like we looking for ghosts behind the spirits as if it ain't the same shit, as if we ain't the reckoning slid between the heart of a revolution, but, but I'd never, but to never know is to never doubt. So you, you can't study their fork tongue story of who we are, as their seed was born of empty. And we are and have always been able to own the language to conquer drought and call for thirst. But like I said, I don't need you to change yourself. Ain't no shame in the not knowing. We all growing into our own eyes and eyes just like I myself am growing from a purpose soaked into a slow burn. I am a character that of life is fire and stone. The backbone of pharaohs left to alchemy worlds into trauma or trauma into words. A black pearl spawned. Southeast London born, fed into the mouth of Brooklawn. I am Lady Well in Albee Square Mall, melting the asphalt beneath my feet. House music carved into the belly of a breakbeat. All that just to say, I am the what was, that is the foundation of what will be, spitting a dope 16 where there is no guest list tonight. I'm from an era of black migration. 
Black Mondays and Black Nights. Done at the first smile of street lights. Heathen working the muscle. Bully pushing a pen hustle. This here be 50 years combined with a Jamaican struggle. I be my father's patwa, dripped into the wrist so that each stanza ends with an island breeze. I am the sheath holding the edge of midnight. A sharpened bullet cut into a chamber of a boy named nigger, but retold black man, husband, father, poet, father more than a poet. Being a father makes more of this poet. Furthermore, I be a run on sentence, running on like superfluous if not handled correctly. Spoken like the embedded memory of a peel back where at any point nigger can seep through the seams like code switch. I am as if a kiss grew into a poem and turned its cadence to a mantra code switch motherfuckers may be made to maybe hear the meandering mean of my mention is meaning anger when in fact it's more my moving mountains made to make my momentum momentary but still I move through these moments with code switch I be these words caressed around a quick 24 12 more than a written testimony's folklore. Rocking J's and or electronic or laid before ancestors. Therefore, I am the lacerated stare of rebel Africa sitting in the witch's brew. Fear not that I see you, but how close these words resemble the resurrection that lives in these poems. I am when you swallow lines and realize you are what you eat in triumph or defeat. I save each tear in a pen so that each can write its own piece. Who am I? I am the past that is so present I start the day first by just surviving death. Code switch, motherfucker, I wish you would. Code switch, I am always the only roar in a still of stairs. Who am I? I am hot and top Venus and Du Bois in the eye of a slave ship. A silent T holding a bullwhip tongue, calling back the thunder. These eyes recognize how close we are to the share and crop. How the drip of Africa left in the drum peels the sound of capture from the heart. So I, I beat these words like church fire and bullet, Trayvon and Bland, Tubman in a rope burn set to erupt a revolution on an Alabama plantation, gunny sack and cotton gins in flames. I am brown and here, that is to say, I am black and California, that is to say, I am black on the Pacific, that is to say, I am black Pacific, that is to say, I am broken God, speaking of city. In, in a land of ramble, I am named from birth Shaka Manelik Imhotep Campbell. Thank you so much for your time. off the clock. <laughs> you got something on you? All right. <clears throat> I had this dream uh, planted dead in the weekday that I was laid up in the hospital. And people kept coming into my room by the dozens. And each dozen had special handshakes for each other and occasionally current dance moves. And they would kick my hospital bed from time to time to let me know that they'd be dancing from this room on out to my grave. Strange cha-chas and soft shoe shuffles. Disco spins like they were dancing for a white sundown, marking numbness in their feet, drum race ride. And I was ready to die because, you know, ask a musician in the tombs after quarters, the surroundings themselves, it is the uniform. And still, I just couldn't bring myself to visualize against God. Uh, one of them stood over me like a conductor, waving their arms over my body, directing my heart to beat fainter and fainter, directing the tools to turn the fluids back. And I kept fading from consciousness with thud after thud on the legs of my bed as they danced wilder and wilder, well, wild but meek. Or artificially meek, like an artificial pastor told them to be. I was to be some kind of projection or character to be laid at their feet. Are you the only one participating in the revolution today? They mock me. Now, I was ready to go because now, there's plenty of pianos that could use a new soul, and I'm going to be in the revolution for as long as it takes, so you can punch me out now. I mean, I was born with one foot in a lime pit anyway, but check it out. See, no one bothered to ask the doctor if I was really dead. It was just too busy strutting, too busy kissing, and I kept fading and fading with only enough breath and sweet consciousness to count their smiles. One, two, three, four, five. And then I heard a voice, a whisper, and it was counting with me. Six, we said. Seven, we said. Eight. And another voice joined us. Nine. 
10 and another. You see, I haven't been eating, mama. I've been in a trance. I haven't been sleeping. I've been washing my face off the port of Charleston. There's blood on the fog. Now these little societies wander together like hopeful drops of a virus. Citizen testaments bent on offering me a nation of breadwinners to hold me back like it's a Brinks. I wrinkle the concrete sometimes like flesh. My Martin Luther King permanence turned away from a podium into the reeds like God is the dangerous twin. Black August to the mountaintop balcony on my bedroom floor. You know, they steal you from the earth itself and suspend you and your broken neck from their foolish euphoria. From the loyalty out to their great superstition, loyalty out to their agrarian reform, I returned to my mother completely disrespected. For peeling the heat off of purgatory, they kill poets like me. Walk me away from my poems, never to be heard from again. In this final industrial complex of bloodlines picked over, picked through a sport and spiritual death of your devil at least half made. Police become a pretty word. I'm reading a lynch mob shoe strings like they were tea leaves, teaching you how to write about cities. It's the 25th century in the mirror, people. Tyranny against your chump times, you're a chump to be mocked even with a gun in your car. A cubit of needlework spell tuned for the proletariat, the relapse ministry. Talented people curled up in a fetal position next to a diamond, dying. Just another service day in the theatrics of tea house fascism, in a bouquet of surveillance cameras, in the poverty of God. New blue eyes, corpses of war. A newly potted presidency, a one big shiny coin, if you ask an animated capitalism, another non literal voice killing his white freedom. The deification of hyphens, medicine, bread, and picture shows, great protesters in LA, guests of our ink, drop kicking roses in the graveyard, DC mink like a stone torn in half, the pen advances, despite CIA guideposts. Despite non-African past and futures, a metaphorical but not surreal day in a horn-ridden life, horn player improvising king, like a radio prize fight featuring Shango himself, a real hand sweeps the land of racism. May I return to the ground? May I make progress with the gun? On our mother Emmanuel, they put on music that evening, a swinging type body language for you to drink with fermented $5 bills for your body language. Some applause. My past stomach lining, neither a good thing nor a bad thing, like being psychic on the way to a lethal injection. It'll sit you down with Lady Day. Lady Day leading youth who surrendered their souls to Africa too soon. Potty thought floating in the cup of water, she saved me. Accessing my stomach, accessing the love of the American lynched. Cold sleeves, wooden avalanche to the wrist, our mother Emmanuel. Avalanche to the sharp keys, pain. Or the deal you make with pain. A piano makes sense for them. Laying hands on the world gradually. Addressing the bending necks on the streets of the north. Travelers sailing in pain, repeating pain in the north. Ten trigger fingers on that piano of harmony would have me. Putting a hundred fights on every direction off of the Lady Day, leaning on trees again. Recruiting the countryside itself, saying, uh, lay your plan out on this lightning. Make your poems a corner pocket of men. I greeted the blues itself. America may clean my dead body, but will never include me. There goes the poet. Killing without killing. <laughs> never mind this little painting of your language. May I be a meaningful lynching. A crow's passing, uh, good and dead by the afternoon. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative all over the United States. There are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. I understand the psycho-spiritual refusal to write white history or take the glass freeway. White skin tattooed on my right forearm, ricochet sewers near where I collapse into a rat-infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti. In the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part. My body brings down to Christmas. The new bullets pray over blankets made from the old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark. Extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration. The waistband before the next protest poster. Hey, by the way, time is not in the losing, your honor. I will save your desk for last. You're witty, your honor. You're moving money again, your honor. It's only raining one thing. Down white cops and prison guard shadows reminding me of spoiled milk floating on the oil spill. A neighborhood making a lot of fuss over his demise. A new lake for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder. The figment of village. A new news to a new white preacher all in an abstract painting of a president. Bought slavery some time, didn't it? The tension screeches of military boats and election Tuesday cars. A cold-blooded study in leg irons. Proof that some white people have found a nooses. Now, sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and bolt action audiences. The Medgar Evers second is definitely my favorite law of science. Found news clippings and primitive Methodists, my arm changes imperialisms. Simple policing, 
versus structural frenzies, elementary school script versus even wider white spectrums, heartless bleeding, and the challenge of watching civilians think. Yeah, terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads and arrows myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crest. Modern fans of war with their um, t-shirt poems and t-shirt guild and me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus, I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. Mm. Apparently too much of San Francisco was not there in the first place. I mean, this dream requires more condemned Africans to put another way, state violence rises down, or still life is just getting warmed up, or army life is looking for a new church and ignored all other suggestions, or folktale writers have not made up their minds as to who is going to be their friends. This is the worst downtown yet, and I have borrowed a cigarette everywhere. I've taken many a walk to the back of a bus that led on out the back of a storyteller's prison sentence, then on out the back of slave scars, but this is my comeback face. I left my watch on the public bathroom sink and took the toilet with me. Threw it at the first bus I saw eating single mothers half alive. It flew through the bus line number and on out the front of the White House. Hopefully you find comfort downtown, but if not, we brought you enough cigarette filters to make a decent winter coat. A special species, a handshake, let's all know who's king, what's the lifespan of the uniform. I mean, this coffee needs to quit acting like those are birds singing. Wesley Nails have no wings, have no voice other than that of a white world dying at book pages in the gas pump. Catch you in it. The way three nooses is the rule, or the way potato sack masks go so well with radio calls, or the way condemned Africans fought their way back to the ocean, only to find ways made of 1920s burnt up piano parts, European backdoor deals, and red flowers for widows who spend all day in the sun mumbling in San Francisco. Red flowers, but what's the color of a doctor visit? There are book titles in the streets. Book titles like Hero, You Make a Better Zero, or Hey, Fur Coat Lady, the President is Dead, or Pay Me Back in Children, or They Hung Up Their Bodies in Their Own Museums. Another book titles pulled from a drum solo. Run here, hero. Lie at the hiding place. All the bullets in 10 precincts know where to go. There's no heaven nor any other good idea in the sky. Politics means that people did it and people do it. Understand that when in San Francisco and other places that was never really there, I bet this ocean thinks it's an ocean, but it's not. It's just Sixth and Mission Street. I don't know who's king. King of thin things, you know, like America, I'm proud to deserve to die. I'm going to eat my dinner extra slow tonight in this police state candy dispenser you all call a neighborhood. And I said a man that goes unpunished, never mind a murderer's insomnia or the tea kettle preparing everyone for police sirens. <laughs> all right. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for uh, coming and hanging with us. Uh, in, in order of their groovy appearance, first, Landon Smith. Give it up for Landon Smith. <laughs> Melani Clay. Dante Clark. Shaka Campbell. <laughs> and I'm your, I'm your friendly neighborhood tango. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and, and shout out to the library, you know, and, the, and, and, and my man Michael Lambert right there, the city librarian, you know what I mean? <laughs> Leader of this here circus, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> King of the pirate ship. But uh, man, travel safe or, <laughs> or sit right here if there's something else coming. <laughs> I right, appreciate you.